Mason, weighing 317 pounds, and Olivia, who had lost friends to heart attacks, faced concerns about Mason's health. Over two years, Mason shed a substantial amount of weight, reaching around 203 pounds. However, he contemplated quitting after losing 114 pounds, considering the arduous journey. Mason's expression of wanting to quit prompted Olivia to adamantly refuse. This refusal sparked a chain of events. If Mason were to quit, Olivia decided he would only receive closeness four times a year. This decision led Olivia to seek fulfillment elsewhere for her lovemaking needs. As a result, she restricted their lovemaking encounters to four times a year, aligning them with weight loss goals. These occasions were specifically Valentine's Day, their anniversary, and both birthdays. In the moments following Olivia's threat, the foundation of their marriage trembled. It began with Mason's head snapping up, shock and confusion in his eyes, quickly followed by sadness and hurt. As his emotions shifted to anger and disgust, the marriage's foundation crumbled. Olivia realized immediately that she had made a critical mistake by pushing Mason to his limits and then threatening infidelity as punishment. Expressing frustration, Mason emphasized the tremendous effort he put into losing over 100 pounds for Olivia's sake. He accused her of using closeness as a manipulative tool, expressing disappointment at her reward of continued deprivation and potential infidelity. Mason believed Olivia had jeopardized their marriage, introducing chaos into their home. He questioned her trustworthiness and speculated about her thoughts of infidelity throughout their two-year journey. In conclusion, he felt Olivia had ruined their marriage, leaving him uncertain about what to believe. Olivia expressed regret, insisting she never intended to engage in infidelity. Despite her plea, Mason questioned the credibility of her words with a look of disgust. He conveyed his seriousness about the situation and left the table a few minutes later, heading into the garage to contemplate. In the garage, Mason declared his need for time to think, leaving Olivia in tears as she realized the gravity of the situation. She sobbed, acknowledging the seed of doubt planted in Mason's mind and understanding the challenge of dispelling it. Reflecting on her actions, Olivia admitted her lack of consideration for Mason's feelings, acknowledging her greed and desire for more despite Mason's previous efforts. Now she recognized the need to regain what she had lost. After spending about an hour in the garage engaged in activities to occupy his hands, Mason contemplated the complexities of the situation. He didn't truly believe his wife had cheated on him over the last two years, but earlier in the day, he would have been confident. However, after her comment, he'd found himself uncertain. He couldn't be sure if she had cheated on him in the past or if she would do so in the future. Mason vocalized his thoughts saying, I need to find out. Returning to the house, Mason noticed Olivia seated at the kitchen table, visibly distressed with red eyes and a red nose from recent tears. Despite feeling a sense of regret, Mason remained resolute in his decision. He informed Olivia of his choice to abandon the diet, stating that he would restrict their intimate moments to the previously agreed upon four times a year or none at all, leaving the decision to her discretion. Mason warned of severe consequences if she engaged in relations with someone else, expressing his intent to inflict physical harm on her potential lover. Addressing Olivia sternly, he asserted that any infidelity would result in an immediate end to their relationship. He emphasized his intolerance for staying married to a cheater and labeled her as untrustworthy. Mason announced his mistrust and his intention to closely monitor her actions, cautioning her to be exceedingly careful concluding his message. Mason mentioned his temporary departure, stating he would be absent for lunch, but assured he would return for dinner. He suggested the option of ordering food if she didn't feel like cooking, leaving the atmosphere charged with tension and uncertainty. Grabbing his car keys from the counter, he exited through the back door into the garage. Moments later, Olivia heard the garage door open and Mason's car driving away. She exclaimed aloud, Oh my God, I can't believe this. How could I be so stupid? She began sobbing again, regretting her words and wishing she had kept quiet. About an hour later, Olivia got up to use the bathroom before lying down on her bed and crying some more. When Mason returned home later that afternoon, he found her in the exact same position. 
like many husbands suspecting their wives of cheating, Mason decided to conduct some detective work of his own. He thought the easiest way to start was by driving to the telephone provider to request a printout of call logs for their home phone and his wife's cell phone, both of which were in his name, ensuring he wouldn't encounter any issues obtaining the reports. The landline phone company informed him that he could receive the call logs electronically. They were able to upload the call logs for the past three years onto a CD for a small fee, which he gladly paid. Walking out of the office with everything he needed, he requested three years worth of data because he wanted to trace back before he began the diet to understand if there was any motivation for Olivia's initial distancing. Next, he visited the cell phone company and requested the same data. Initially, they hesitated because it was his wife's cell phone number he wanted the data for. However, Mason pointed out that it was a joint account with his name prominently on the records leaving them no reason to withhold information. They offered the data electronically for a fee of $135. Though Mason found it excessive, he deemed it probably worth the money for easier access. Nonetheless, he made a mental note to consider switching his cell phone provider in the future. Returning home around 5 o'clock p.m., Mason found Olivia sound asleep on their bed. Deciding to let her sleep, he went back to their home office locking the door to avoid interruptions. Sitting down at the computer, he downloaded all the data from the CDs into a folder in his documents. He had already planned his approach, intending to start two years ago and compile a list of every telephone number called in the first month when he began his diet rewards for goals achieved. In September 2019, their home phone recorded 112 calls to 25 different numbers. Mason found that he could sort the data using the format provided by the phone company. He created a list organized by numbers, including the number dialed, the date, the time, and the duration of each call. Once he mastered the system, it took him about an hour and a half to compile the list for every call made from their home phone in the last two years. He was just about to start the same process with Olivia's cell phone data when he heard the doorknob of the office rattle. Realizing the door was locked, Mason quickly saved his progress and concealed all evidence of his activities. He logged off the computer and opened the door to find Olivia in a pitiful state, her hair disheveled, eyes and nose red from crying. With her head bowed, she reluctantly looked up at Mason, expressing deep remorse and acknowledging the hurt and anger she had caused. Olivia recognized her selfish and cruel actions admitting she overstepped by interfering with his diet progress. She sincerely apologized, asking for forgiveness and acknowledging that the decision to continue the diet should have been solely his. Despite feeling overwhelmed by the situation, Olivia pleaded with Mason to forgive her. Mason conveyed his forgiveness, emphasizing that it was granted based only on the information available to him at the moment. He reminded her of the sacrifices he had made during the two-year struggle with his weight including abstaining from intimacy, all done for her. He expressed his love for her amidst the turmoil. However, he admitted that he had reached a breaking point and could no longer continue. Mason addressed the current situation, likening it to a gorilla in the room that needed to be addressed. He emphasized the importance of definitively knowing whether or not she had cheated on him, as the uncertainty was driving him crazy. Mason outlined the conditions for their relationship moving forward, stating that if she had not cheated in the past and did not plan to in the future, they could be okay. However, he made it clear that he needed assurance. Holding Olivia accountable for creating the mess with her hasty comment and threat, he expressed disbelief at her lack of consideration for his feelings and the damage it caused to distrust in her. Mason highlighted the need for her to deal with the consequences until he felt confident in their relationship. Olivia hoped he would forgive her and forget what she had said, but that was not to be. She thought, I suppose I deserved everything that was happening to me, but I hoped it could all go away. Nodding slowly in resigned agreement, she turned and walked dejectedly back to the bedroom, closing the door behind her. She lay on her bed again, not sobbing, but tears streaking her face. Mason opened the bedroom door and asked Olivia if she wanted something to eat. Olivia replied, No, Mason, I am not hungry. Mason walked out to his car and drove off again to a nearby place called Grisham's. 
He and Olivia had gone there for drinks many times, and their food was excellent. He knew he could have a few beers and a greasy but delicious bacon cheeseburger. In the previous two years, he had not had more than two beers in a week's time, and not one bacon. Tonight, Mason decided he would give in and indulge in a cheeseburger. He knew he wouldn't allow himself to become overweight like before, but tonight he was going to splurge and enjoy his dinner, despite his breaking heart. Upon returning home, he went back to the office and started working on the call log from Olivia's cell phone. Since he already knew the drill, finishing the cell phone list was easier, and he completed it in half the time. After reviewing the two lists, Mason determined that over the past two years, there were a total of 3,571 calls made from 58 different telephone numbers. Sorting the calls by telephone number, he found some surprising results. There were almost 450 calls to his cell phone, about 250 calls to his parents' number, and a similar number of calls to Olivia's parents' number. There were nearly as many calls to each of Olivia's sisters, and about half as many to his brother John. Additionally, there were scattered calls to various friends whose numbers Mason recognized, and a few to other numbers he didn't recognize. However, as he went down the list, he noticed over 230 calls to a number he didn't recognize, and another 60-plus calls to a second unfamiliar number. Realizing there were also multiple calls minus 25 or more, to additional numbers over the two years, he assumed they might be to places like hair salons or stores, or even churches. None of these statistics bothered Mason much, so he simply noted them and returned his attention to the two major unfamiliar numbers. Given his nature, Mason decided to refine his research further by sorting the calls by day and time for those two numbers. The surprising results sent shivers down his spine, and almost instantly he was consumed with suspicion and anger. Every Wednesday at 10.30am, Mason attended a staff meeting with his boss and other department heads at a local restaurant's meeting rooms. They convened for an hour, took a one-hour lunch break, and concluded their business by 1.30pm or 2 o'clock p.m. Without fail, consistently every week at 10.25 a.m., there was a call to his cell phone. Yes, some weeks were exceptions, but Mason recognized instantly that those were the weeks he was on vacation. The pattern remained intact. Every Wednesday at 10.25 a.m. and at 10.45 a.m. every Wednesday, a call was made to the first of the two unknown numbers. The realization ignited a fire of suspicion within him. It seemed too much of a coincidence not to be suspicious. Mason knew at that moment that whatever he was about to discover would not bring him joy. Persevering through his investigation, he examined the second number and quickly realized that these calls were consistently placed on Fridays. On Friday afternoons, once a month, Mason played golf with his brother and their best friends, completing 18 holes around 5.40 p.m. They would then stop at the clubhouse for a couple of drinks before heading home, usually reaching home before 6.40 p.m. What infuriated him was that Olivia always called him just before he teed off to express her love and inform him she would be waiting when he finished his round and got home. Mason now understood what was happening, but he lacked visual proof or knowledge of the person with whom she was cheating. The unsettling part was pondering how long it had been going on and whether it started only when Olivia distanced herself, or if it began earlier. Extending his investigation another year, he discovered that the same calls were made once a month for the three months before he was cut off. Whatever Olivia was doing, she had been doing it three months earlier, but not as frequently. All he had to do now was figure out who, and then decide what he was going to do about it. Mason believed finding out who would be easy. He ran a reverse lookup on the first number, and found it to be an unlisted cell phone number. Running the reverse lookup on the second number, he discovered it was listed to a lion. Of course, Mason knew exactly who Lion was. He was Mason's trainer at the gym. Olivia had initially found him for Mason. So, Olivia was calling Liam on the Fridays when Mason golfed. Mason noted the address in his call log spreadsheet and decided to go out again for a while. Returning to Grisham's, Mason had a couple more beers. When things quieted down after the dinner rush, he approached the rather attractive bartender, Sophia, seeking help. Briefly explaining the situation, 
Mason asked Sophia to determine if the first number belonged to Liam. He dialed the number and instructed Sophia to ask for Liam. If it was him, Sophia should mention that a woman had given her the number as a potential trainer and that she would stop by the gym one of these days. Sophia, after taking the phone, inquired if the person on the other end was Liam. She explained that she was Jennifer, a woman who had received Liam's name from someone at her hair salon. The suggestion was made during a conversation about getting in better shape. Jennifer provided some personal details, mentioning her age, 25, height, 5'6", and current weight, around 133 pounds, despite feeling a bit scrutinized over the phone. She acknowledged the potential to improve her fitness and happiness by reaching a weight of around 103 pounds, expressing gratitude for the compliment. Jennifer inquired about Liam's availability and learned that there was recently an opening due to a client quitting. She expressed her interest and intention to visit Liam in a couple of days to discuss the necessary steps to achieve her fitness goals. Thanking Liam, she concluded the conversation, looking forward to meeting him soon. Mason sat there in amazement at what Sophie had just accomplished. She verified that it was indeed Liam from the gym and discovered that he did take on women who used him as a trainer. She even confirmed that there was an opening because of a dropout. Mason thought, that dropout had to be me. He realized Olivia had already called Liam to inform him of what happened and to warn him to be extra careful. Despite feeling low, Mason found humor in Sophia's actions. He didn't know or care how much she weighed. She was attractive just as she was. He smiled at her and complimented her, saying she was too funny and that he thought she was perfect the way she was. Mason warned her to stay away from Liam, stating that no one could have a more perfect body than hers. Sophia responded with a beautiful smile, expressing gratitude and addressing him as a kind sir. She acknowledged Mason's attractiveness, describing him as a hunk, and expressed confusion about why his wife would seek companionship elsewhere. Mason reciprocated the smile and admitted that two years ago he might not have been considered a hunk. However, he firmly stated that it didn't justify his wife's act of cheating. He thanked Sophia for her assistance in gathering information. Gathering information about Liam and receiving a boost to his deflated ego, Mason expressed his gratitude and mentioned that he should head home. He thanked Sophia once more for her support and understanding. Upon arriving home late, Mason simply went to bed. As he crawled into bed, he glanced across at Olivia and was overwhelmed with feelings of loss and disappointment. He couldn't recall ever feeling this low in his life, but he was certain that things would only get worse before they got better. Olivia stirred slightly as he climbed into bed and murmured, I love you, Mason. Mason merely grunted in response, turning away from her in an attempt to sleep. However, sleep eluded him as he lay there, lost in his thoughts. He was certain he heard a sob or two from Olivia though she seemed to have calmed down somewhat. In the morning, Mason woke up to find Olivia spooned against him, her body pressed into his back. Sensing his arousal, she reached around and placed her hand on him, expressing remorse for her previous words and seeking closeness. Mason, mindful of his vulnerability, resisted the temptation, citing the need to get going that morning and the boundaries he had established earlier. Reminding Olivia of the communication about the cut off he emphasized that such attempts should not be repeated. He then left the bed, showered, and headed to work. Alone at home, Olivia muttered to herself about deserving the consequences of her words and the emotional pain that accompanied them. Upon arriving at work, Mason confided in his boss about the issues at home, briefly explaining the situation and receiving support. The boss advised him to take any necessary time off to address his suspicions. Additionally, Mason's boss provided the name of a reputable electronics distributor for surveillance equipment. Expressing gratitude, Mason informed his boss that he would be taking time off from Wednesday through Friday to pursue his suspicions. Understanding Mason's intentions, the boss wished him good luck with a smile. Mason went to the electronics distributor's location and found out that his boss had called ahead, instructing them to assist him with whatever he needed. While visual evidence seemed challenging, Mason felt that recording was more manageable. He acquired three top-of-the-line bugs with sufficient battery life to transmit many hours of activity to a receiver within a couple of city blocks. 
where the operator downloaded the data, Mason returned home to find a special dinner awaiting him on the table, his favorite lasagna with garlic bread and sweet green peas. He thanked Olivia for the wonderful meal and excused himself to watch some television. Olivia cleaned up the kitchen and joined him in the TV room, being cautious not to get too close. At bedtime, she headed to their bedroom, giving Mason the opportunity to plant one of the bugs inside their home phone, ensuring a complete record of every conversation. While nervous about bugging Olivia's cell phone, he decided to proceed without worrying too much. It only took a few minutes, and he was done. Now he had a source of information from either phone. The challenging part Mason faced was planting a bug in Liam's phone. Considering the possibility that Olivia might use a different phone, such as a payphone, to communicate with Liam, Mason wanted to cover all bases. Mason resolved to bug Liam's phone, recalling Liam's close interactions with a well-built blonde woman on Wednesday mornings. Suspecting their interactions, Mason felt the need to gather more information. He planned to seize the opportunity when Liam was preoccupied with the blonde woman to discreetly install the bug. Mason envisioned Liam being so engrossed with the blonde woman that he wouldn't notice Mason's actions. Upon arriving at the gym, Mason saw Liam's phone sitting on his towel, about 10.45 from where Liam was with the blonde. It would be risky to retrieve the phone, but Mason thought, what the hell do I have to lose? He sneaked in, slipped the phone into his pocket, backed out of the gym, and went into the men's room. There, he easily inserted the bug into Liam's phone. The tricky part would be returning the phone to the towel without being noticed. Upon returning to the gym, Mason observed Liam wrapping up his conversation with the blonde. He knew he would never make it to the towel and back without being spotted. Dan, he thought, how am I going to do this? After a few seconds, he decided to try sliding the phone across the floor to the towel, hoping to get it close enough so Liam wouldn't be suspicious. Despite making some noise, Liam, engrossed in conversation, remained oblivious. Fortunately, Mason slid it forcefully enough for it to reach the towel, hitting it hard and sliding underneath. It was perfect. Mason believed there was no way Liam could be suspicious now, so he swiftly left the gym. At precisely 10.55 a.m., Mason's cell phone rang. It was Olivia, saying she wanted to touch base before his meeting. Of course, Mason never disclosed that he was off work for the rest of the week, let alone skipping the meeting. After about 10 minutes, Mason began monitoring the bugs using the receiver from his car. Liam's phone was now bugged. The phone rang, and Mason picked up quickly. Liam greeted Olivia, asking if she wanted to meet at his house as usual. Olivia expressed caution, stating that Mason was highly suspicious and they might need to stop meeting for a while to avoid trouble. Lion grumbled, reluctant to give up their encounters. Mason groaned as he heard Olivia's response, acknowledging the risk. She admitted that the first time they had been intimate, she knew she'd do anything to be with him. Initially cutting off Mason to enjoy their time more with Liam, she couldn't take the chance anymore. Olivia suggested they might resume their weekly encounters in a few weeks, but in the meantime, Liam would have to be content with one of his other girlfriends. Olivia wasn't jealous of Liam's other relationships and proposed considering meeting on the Fridays Mason went golfing. She needed time to think about it and promised to let Liam know if it could work out. Mason had suffered enough, making him sick and angry. He was determined to get revenge. Enduring Liam's advances even before he started the diet, Olivia had used the diet as an excuse to enhance her encounters with Liam for the past two and a half years. Olivia had been meeting with Liam every Wednesday and on the monthly golfing Fridays, totaling over a hundred encounters. Mason questioned how she could claim to love him while engaging in such behavior and speculated about the possibility of other involvements. Regardless, Liam's involvement alone was enough for Mason to decide on revenge against both of them. Over the next two days, Mason devised plans, established contacts, and ensured favorable conditions for the weekend. Monitoring phone taps, he discovered that Olivia had arranged a beautician appointment for Friday morning. In a conversation on Thursday with her beautician Janine, Olivia explained her desire for a new hairstyle to distract Mason from suspicions of infidelity. 
She mentioned the intention to purchase provocative lingerie to further divert its attention. When asked about Liam, Olivia admitted she might temporarily reduce their encounters, but laughed it off, suggesting it wasn't a permanent decision. Despite the laughter, Mason felt devastated by the revelations, yet his anger began to drive him, burrowing the hurt deep inside. On Friday, Liam initiated contact, proposing an immediate rendezvous with Olivia. She expressed her intense desire, but conveyed her reluctance due to the risk involved, asking for patience until Mason's suspicions subsided. With each conversation, Mason's heartbreak deepened, struggling to comprehend any love in their relationship. He perceived Olivia's actions as purely selfish, devoid of concern or respect for him. Mason pondered where things had gone wrong, but remained determined to carry out his revenge. On Saturday after lunch, the doorbell rang, and Olivia opened it to find Sophia, who introduced herself as a friend of Mason's. Sophia mentioned Mason's approval for her to spend time by the pool. Taken aback, Olivia agreed to show her to the pool. However, Sophia noticed Olivia's lack of a smile, and a subtle smile appeared on her face shortly after Abigail and Harper arrived. Both informed Olivia that Mason had invited them to use the pool, sharing their connections with Mason. Abigail having worked with him for years and Harper having served them at Grisham's. Olivia, confronted with the presence of three attractive women, began to feel uneasy, contemplating various possibilities. The three women settled on Abigail's lounge chairs, applying suntan lotion to themselves. It didn't take them long to agree to apply sunscreen to each other to ensure they didn't miss any spots. Once they were thoroughly coated, they lay on the loungers and began soaking the sun. Shortly afterward, they decided an all-over town would be better. Each woman tied the strings on their bikini tops and dropped them on the towel beside the lounger. Olivia was upset and wanted to ask them to leave, but since Mason had invited them, she had to tread lightly, knowing she was already on thin ice with him. At 3.40 p.m., Sophia approached Olivia and took a seat, revealing that she worked as a bartender at Grisham's. She disclosed that on the night Olivia issued the ultimatum, Mason had stopped by for a few drinks and shared all the details about their situation. Olivia appeared startled, and Sophia expressed her belief that Olivia had made a significant mistake continuing. Sophia informed Olivia that Mason was now suspicious and actively investigating their situation. She conveyed Mason's warning to Olivia, stating that if he discovered past or future infidelity, he intended to be intimate with Sophia, Abigail, and Harper for each instance of cheating. Olivia, shocked, attempted to respond, but Sophie interjected, adding that Mason also planned to question Olivia, and if she lied, he would be intimate with one of them for each lie. Sophia hinted that they found Mason attractive and were open to being intimate with him. Sophia, already aware of Olivia's past infidelity, anticipated Mason's involvement with her. She also anticipated that Olivia, in an attempt to conceal her actions, would likely lie leading to a busy time for Mason satisfying the three women. Abigail joined Sophia and took a seat, sharing that she had known Mason for several years and always found him handsome and sweet, despite his weight gain. She believed he remained the same sweet guy she had known. Abigail admitted to having a crush on him, which had only intensified since he lost the excess weight. She acknowledged the troubles between Olivia and Mason and expressed her willingness to pursue a relationship with Mason, stating that he could have her any time he wanted. Harper also chimed in, expressing that she had been observing Olivia and Mason for a couple of years. She noticed the love Mason showed for Olivia, and she made it clear that she had her eye on them. Harper's statement suggested her interest in Mason and her observation of their relationship dynamics. Harper acknowledged Mason's kindness and consideration toward Olivia, expressing admiration for their relationship. She mentioned feeling fortunate to witness such a loving connection and admitted to fantasizing about being in Olivia's position. Harper acknowledged Mason's remarked weight loss of 118 pounds to make Olivia happy and his transformation into a hunk. She conveyed her admiration for him and expressed a desire to have a man like him in her life. At precisely 4 o'clock p.m. as planned, Mason walked out onto the pool deck observing the presence of Olivia and the three women. He greeted Olivia 
and commented on the women's improved tans. Mason playfully remarked on the women's beautiful bodies, suggesting they might give him a hard time. He encouraged Olivia to join the playful banter and jokingly asked why she hadn't removed her top. Olivia, upset by the afternoon's events, reluctantly complied. Mason then posed two questions to Olivia, emphasizing the need for honest answers. He inquired if at any point during their marriage she had cheated on him. Olivia firmly denied any infidelity. Mason pressed further, specifically mentioning Liam from the gym. Olivia maintained her denial, expressing confusion about where such an idea originated. Mason continued to question Olivia about her involvement with Liam, mentioning their regular Wednesday meetings and Friday afternoons when he played golf. Despite Mason's detailed knowledge of her affair, Olivia, shocked, stuck to her denial, hoping he lacked concrete evidence. Each of the women present, Sophia, Abigail and Harper, sat with satisfied grins, anticipating the unfolding revelation. Mason proceeded to expose the evidence he had gathered, including phone logs from both the landline and Olivia's cell phone. He described the pattern of calls, pointing out the regularity of her contact with Liam. Mason even had Sophia call the number, confirming it belonged to Liam. Although Mason didn't possess pictures of Olivia and Liam together, he expressed his conviction that the weekly calls were not innocent. In shock, Olivia realized the extent of Mason's knowledge, understanding that their relationship was about to face significant challenges. As she attempted to respond, Mason intervened, stating that there was little to be said and nothing that could convince him of her innocence. Despite his deep love for her, Mason admitted that his current emotions of hurt, disgust and anger outweighed his love. Mason introduced the three women, Abigail, Harper and Sophia, explaining their connections to him. He described Abigail as a longtime work associate, acknowledging her beauty and sweetness. Mason disclosed that he was aware of Abigail's crush on him, but he never acted on it out of respect for his marriage to Olivia. Abigail smiled, acknowledging their genuine friendship. Harper's acquaintance with Mason began during their visits to Grisham's, where she served them. Mason revealed Harper's fantasy of being with them, emphasizing her admiration for him. He complimented Harper's physical attributes, particularly praising her chest. Mason expressed his intention to indulge in the experience with Harper. Sophia, the newest acquaintance, was introduced as a seasoned bartender who showed empathy and compassion during a conversation about Mason's distress at Grisham's. Mason highlighted Sophia's assistance in obtaining information and forming a connection with her. As Mason spoke, Olivia teetered on the edge of a breakdown, visibly emotional, tears flowing, and her breathing becoming erratic. Despite her desire to convey something to Mason, she remained silent. Acknowledging the interest expressed by the three women, Mason revealed his anticipation of enjoying carnal encounters with them, exploring sensuality in every aspect. However, he reiterated his commitment to not be unfaithful in his marriage and expressed the need to end the marriage with Olivia to pursue these relationships. Reluctant to violate his pledge, Mason asserted that terminating the marriage was the only solution. Sophia, acting as both a bartender and a process server, produced divorce papers from her bag and served Olivia. Overwhelmed with emotions, Olivia broke into tears upon receiving the papers. In an attempt to plead with Mason, she apologized profusely and expressed her love, pleading with him to reconsider. However, Mason responded by expressing doubt about Olivia's love, citing her actions over the past two years as evidence. He emphasized that the issue went beyond a couple of instances, believing it occurred over a hundred times. The court hearing was set for the following Friday, and after the legal separation, Mason planned to commence relationships with the three women. He suggested that indulging in pleasures with them might help him find forgiveness for Olivia's affair with Liam and understand the satisfaction it brought her. Mason expressed the hope that forming lasting connections with the new relationships could provide the love and support he had believed he had with Olivia. He informed the three women that it was time for them to leave, assuring them that he would be in touch individually. He then went into the house to gather a few belongings, preparing for a stay at a hotel until Friday when either he or Olivia would officially move out. Meanwhile, 
Unable to form coherent thoughts, Olivia remained seated by the pool, now crying softly. Mason emerged through the patio doors. Mason placed his suitcases down and approached her. Olivia wasn't sure what more he had to say, but it quickly became evident. Mason reminded her of the consequences he had forewarned for her lover. As it turned out, when she supposedly cancelled on Liam the previous day, he pursued a relationship with the well-endowed bunker worker he warmed up with every Wednesday morning from 9.40am to 10.40am. His prelude before their rendezvous. It seems Sophia, Abigail and Harper will have a similar effect on Mason, hoping to transform him into a love-making devotee for them. By the way, the blonde was Emily, James Bennett's wife. James took offence to Lamb's involvement with his wife, and he, along with a couple of his associates, subjected Liam to a severe beating. Liam's face is now a mess, with a few remaining teeth and some broken ribs. James even allowed Mason the privilege of delivering a significant blow to Liam's groin. The outcome? It's doubtful Liam will produce any more hot seed, and there's skepticism about his ability to engage in lovemaking activities again. Mason, of course, will deny any involvement in Liam's fate. Moreover, Friday being his golf day conveniently provides Mason with an alibi through his brother and friends. Wishing Olivia a great life, Mason informed her they would meet in court the following Friday. That day, Olivia was left alone in tears. Within the next two hours, she packed her bags and headed to her mother's place. The divorce process took eight months, leaving Olivia devastated and sinking into deep depression. Contrary to what he claimed about the other ladies, Mason had no intention of following through. Instead, he'd found solace in two golden retrievers and ultimately discovered unconditional true love. In the quiet aftermath of the divorce proceedings, Olivia found herself on a journey of self-discovery. Through the pain and heartache, she unearthed the strength she never knew she possessed. With each passing day, she pieced herself back together, finding solace in the embrace of family and friends. Meanwhile, Mason's path took an unexpected turn. As he walked his beloved golden retrievers through the park one crisp autumn morning, he stumbled upon a chance encounter that would change his life forever. There, amidst the vibrant colors of the changing leaves, he met Rachel, a kindred spirit with a heart as pure as his own. In Rachel's warm gaze and gentle laughter, Mason found the true meaning of love. Together, they embarked on a new chapter filled with laughter, understanding, and unwavering support. And as they walked hand in hand into the sunset, Olivia found peace in knowing that sometimes the end of one story is merely the beginning of another. Dear listeners, please share your thoughts about this story in the comments.